Hello, my friends. It's Hannah, the Omaha introvert. I'm here to finally film my road trip video. So I'm going to be showing you footage from various stores I stopped at. Um, was gone for about 10 days after Christmas. Just It was kind of a spur of the moment trip. Wanted to get out for a little bit. Hey, I'm kind of adventurous, so I'm always up for a road trip and got to check out several awesome record stores. So I'm gonna be showing you footage from several record stores and some pictures. Some stores were a little iffy on whether we could film inside their store or not. So some stores I didn't get footage. I'm also gonna be showing you some pictures of a few touristy things I did in the area. So let's get started. Drove through Kansas, Oklahoma, and ultimate destination was Austin, Texas. So. Let's begin with my first stop, which was Topeka, Kansas. Um, stopped at a store called Time Machine Records. It was a pretty cute, smallish store. The, the employee there was very friendly. There was a very large section of used vinyl, especially the just in used vinyl bins. Um, I was pretty impressed by the selection. However, I did not buy anything, so I'm not showing you um, any purchases. They also had plenty of used vintage equipment, like turntables and speakers and receivers, so that was pretty neat to see. Um, CDs were a little bit on the high side, like $5 each for pretty common titles, so um, I just passed on getting anything there, but it was fun to stop in and see the store. So here is footage of Time Machine Records in Topeka, Kansas. <laughs> Records in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. This is my favorite store hands down out of all the record stores I was able to check out. Um, there's two locations. I ended up going to both of them. I'm going to be talking about the Oklahoma City store first. Yeah, I just really liked how the store was organized um, into different genres. They had a very large alternative indie section. I was thinking about getting this um, bootleg from My Bloody Valentine right here. But I didn't get it. It's like a collection of their EPs, um, bootleg version. I kind of passed on it because I have a lot of that stuff on CD um, and I'm, I was just thinking I could get it cheaper somewhere else. So I passed on that for now. Their just in used arrivals bin was incredible. In fact, I put maybe two or three records back just because you know, it was early on in the road trip. I didn't want to spend all my cash right away. So um, there's one thing I kind of regret putting back, but that's okay. I got a few other things I'm going to show you here in a second. They had a very impressive used audio equipment section in the store. So here, check out some footage. <laughs> See the bad moon rising 
I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of the layout of the stores and you know if you ever want to check it out hey you saw a little bit of footage from them. Um, I'm gonna show you a few finds that I got from Guest Room Records in Oklahoma City. Um, I'm gonna show you the CDs first. So I got this EP from Best Coast. Um, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I'm a pretty big Best Coast fan. I was able to see them live in 2016 and I just really love Bethany's voice. So this is their EP from 2013. Um, this is $4, so I'm really happy about that. Their new album drops, I think, at the end of February. Next, I got a few CDs from Julian Cope, which I don't run into that often. So I got Jehovah Kill, and this is his album from 1992. I listened to this, and honestly, I was somewhat let down or bored, especially after listening to Peggy Suicide. Um, this just didn't really grab me the same way that Peggy Suicide did, but I'm gonna give this a few more spins and um, it'll probably grow on me, you know. And then I got this other one. This is Fried. I wanted to pick this up because it's a deluxe edition. Um, so this too has some live material. I was very pleased to get this and I have not spun this one yet. Okay, on to the vinyl that I picked up at Guest Room. I got Gang of Four's second album, Solid Gold. So that's nice to have. I'm also looking for their first album. I think it's called Entertainment, right? I'm on the lookout for that one. Uh, this is on Warner Brothers. Post-punk, lots of energy on this album. I love the bass lines. Um, check them out if you're not familiar with Gang of Four. I feel like every time I film a video, I I look like Rudolph. I just came in from outside, so <laughs> it's cold out. Um, Big Dipper, I found this album. I think this is their first album, Heavens, um, 1987. And their college rock alternative from the 80s. So yeah, check them out. Those are my purchases from Guest Room. Okay, let's move on to Austin. Austin was the next stop on the trip. And uh, the same day, that we got there, stopped at End of an Ear, and several people recommended the store to me. I think Paul at Baraka P-Dub recommended it, and then uh, one of my other friends, Dave, who lives in Austin, he recommended that I check out this store. I love the store. They had a lot of great used CDs that I'm gonna show you in a little bit. Great prices on the CDs. Um, in fact, probably the best prices that I saw on the whole road trip or uh, well, there was a store in Kansas as well that had really good UCD prices. So kind of an overview of End of an Ear. They had a pretty large used and new CD section. Like I said, I was impressed with the used CD section. Um, also very well organized. They had large metal, psych, classic rock sections of vinyl. Lots of new vinyl as well. I like their Just In used arrival bin. I didn't end up getting anything. I was thinking of getting a Japanese pressing of Japan's tin drum record. Now I'm kicking myself for not picking that up, but it is what it is. They also had these huge, awesome speakers in their audio equipment room. They had a separate room in the back, just full of audio equipment. I will go ahead and show you the footage from End of an Ear right now.
actually ended up going to end of an year twice. Um, I think I spent four days in Austin. So went there the first day and then back again, maybe the third day, because there was a, a CD from a local band. I wanted to pick up a shoegaze band, which I'm not showing in this video. You'll have to wait for that. But I'll show you the new or the new CDs I got really quick. Royal Trucks. This is their album. It's just called Thank You. It's from I think 96. I can't really see that. Royal Trucks are comprised of I think maybe a husband wife duo, Neil and Jennifer. I could be wrong on that. Um, it's sludgy, alternative rock, kind of with a blues and grunge vibe, if that makes sense. Uh, the vocals are kind of hard to get used to. The vocals aren't my favorite, but it fits the music, if that makes sense. So I just really dug this album. I know Lou Daddy Sensei Silver likes them a lot. I'm going to be checking out more of their stuff. So that, this is a dollar. Glad I took a chance on that. Uh, Steve Carlson loves this group and this album. This is World Party. Goodbye Jumbo. Uh, this is also a dollar. So these are perfectly crafted pop songs. I also have their album Private Revolution, which Mazzy sent me. So um, it was nice to find this one uh, for a buck. Placements, Pleased to Meet Me, which I didn't have on any format. This one was four bucks. This and Tim are my favorite replacements album. So um, this is definitely worth having in the collection. Found a Smashing Pumpkins bootleg, which I usually pick up their bootlegs. They're in my top 10 favorite bands for the 90s. So this one's just called Space Boy. This is four bucks. And looks like tracks one through nine were recorded live in Europe during during an acoustic session in 93 and tracks 10 to 15 recorded in Europe during the 93 Siamese Dream Tour. So really good track listing there. I thoroughly enjoyed this. This is either my second or third Smashing Pumpkins bootleg on CD that I found used at CD stores in various places. Then I got a Them CD, Van Morrison. This is three dollars. This is my first them on any format, so I just had to have that. Check out the track listing there. Good stuff. All right, those are my purchases from End of an Ear. Let's move on to Waterloo Records in Austin. Um, this place was pretty overwhelming when I first walked in. This place was gigantic. I definitely could have spent more time in there. Um, I immediately started in their used CD section and they had it separated by day that the used CDs came in, which was kind of unique. They also had a pretty large um, area of just in used vinyl. I didn't get any used vinyl there. I got two records there, new records that were on sale. Um, I thought the CDs were pretty overpriced overall. I think it was at least like seven, eight bucks a CD, depending on the title. So I didn't get any CDs there. I wanted a few, but I was like, uh, I can get these cheaper elsewhere. So yeah, let me show you what I got real quick. And then I'll show you some footage from Waterloo. Um, so I got two records, like I said, one is a shoegaze record, which I'm saving for my shoegaze video. The other, I was just so thrilled to find this on vinyl. This is Velvet Crush's Free Expression. This first came out in 1999. You guys, I was shocked to find this. I didn't know this was reissued. So um, let me show you, because I already have. Did I need this on vinyl? Probably not, but um, it's one of my favorite albums by them. So I just had to get it. I already have the deluxe two disc CD edition. Um, this too has demos. It's, it's worth getting if you ever see that, but yeah, Velvet Crush is one of my favorite power pop bands from the nineties. Rick Mank, he's just an amazing, incredible drummer. In fact, I, I'm even friends with him on Facebook and he has a lot of cool Facebook posts. He loves the birds. So, um, yeah, this is just amazing to find because I hadn't realized that it was reissued. So check this out if you like power pop, harmonies, good melodies, awesome songs on here. That was 16 bucks new, so I thought that was pretty reasonable. All right, check out the footage I got from Waterloo Records here.
moving on. I'm trying to keep this moving. It's going to be a long video. Just hopefully you got a snack or a meat stick, as Sam the Vinyl Douche would say. Um, in my case, help yourself to some carrot sticks <laughs> in the fridge. Um, yeah, just I'm going to keep going here. I appreciate you guys watching. So Breakaway Records in Austin was the next stop. A couple of people in the vinyl community actually recommended this store, so I had to check it out. I was pretty impressed with the used vintage audio equipment they had. That was fun to look at. They did have a large selection of 45s. In fact, just a pretty big row of them, but that's not really something I collect yet anyway. I don't know, this addiction could go deeper and I could get into 45s, which my wallet will not be pleased, but I'm sticking with 12 inch albums <laughs> right now. I bet they get plenty of gems in on a regular basis, but on that particular day, just nothing stood out to me. So I didn't get anything, but here are a few pictures and I think maybe a video that I got of the store. So check it out. I did in Austin was I went to the Motown exhibit which was at the Lyndon B. Johnson Presidential Library so kind of got to kill two birds with one stone um, you know mainly wanted to go to the Motown exhibit but since I was there also was able to check out the Lyndon B. Johnson um, library part of that building so that was interesting um, I really like the Motown exhibit here are some pictures That was time well spent. I'm glad I got to see that. Moving on to the next record store, stopped at Sound Gallery, which uh, my friend Richard on Facebook recommended I check out. I think he has a friend that works there. And wow, this store was awesome. They offered coffee. They had just really high-end audio equipment on display. Rooms of it, you guys. It was incredible. I've never seen that much audio equipment packed into one store and right when you walk in is some new vinyl they had a very small um box or two of used vinyl i didn't get anything um but they had lots of jazz lots of rock reissues so it was fun to look through those bins and um yeah like i said the highlight of that store is just seeing the endless amounts of audio equipment so check out the footage of the sound gallery
pretty incredible, right? Um, yeah, thank you, Richard, for recommending that store. So before leaving Austin, um, I wanted to do a few other touristy um, stops. So I got to see the Stevie Ray Vaughan statue and also the Willie Nelson statue. Was able to also check out a few parks. I went to Mount Bonnell. I think it's also called Covert Park. It's the highest point in Austin. Um, some really beautiful views. Now it was really cloudy and cold that day. I was kind of surprised how cool it was. Um, I know it's winter, but, um, you know, after I got back to Omaha, I realized, oh, they're back in the seventies. Well, when I was there, it was in the fifties and sixties. So it was pretty, it was still pretty chilly. So here I am in my coat and my hat <laughs> at Mount Bonnell. And then the last park I stopped at was McKinney Falls State Park. They had a lot of neat waterfalls. I didn't get too many pictures of this park. Um, and I also took a run there. It was kind of a nice little stop to go to that park. So that was Austin, you guys. Um, I spent the most time there on the road trip. So now we're on the trip back to Omaha. So drove to Dallas and spent the night there. So I probably only spent a half of a day in Dallas and I went to two stores there. Also went to a half price books there, but it was honestly the worst half price bookstore I've ever been to. The music section was the smallest I've seen out of any half price books, so I didn't get anything there. Um, I wanted to go to Josie Records in Dallas. However, Dallas to me was a pain to get around in. And I mean, there's 7 million people, right? So I wasn't going to be able to hit up everything. It's huge. Dallas is huge. So, um, yeah, from where I was staying, it would have been 40 to 45 minutes to get to Josie. And we had already spent like the first half of the day getting there and driving. So it was like, eh, let's just kind of stick to where we are. So we were able to go to Forever Young, which was somewhat nice and close to where um, I was staying. And this store was unbelievably large. In fact, when I walked in, I was like, whoa, I wasn't expecting this store to be this massive. It's incredible when you walk in. Um, in fact, you can spend a couple hours in there. I think I spent a little more than an hour. A couple things I wanna say about the store. I did not get anything there, even though there was so much. <laughs> What's neat about that store is they had music separated by decade, which I liked. Tons of new CDs, lots of used CDs. Their used CDs were on the pricey side. Um, seven to nine dollars a UCD which I don't like. I try to like to find my UCDs in the five dollar or less range. It depends what it is. Um, preferably one or two dollars <laughs> but no that wasn't happening there. So they had some vinyl that I was considering. There was a few Jesus and Mary Chain like 12 inch singles that I didn't have but I didn't quite want to pay the price they were asking. So I just passed on everything. They had a whole separate room of like rare pressings, um, just higher dollar pressings. So check out the footage from Forever Young. <laughs> was a CD warehouse. We don't have a CD warehouse in Omaha anymore. I probably shut down 10 years ago. So um, we have a trade post it's called now, but I think those are separate entities. So it was really neat to check out the CD warehouse. Um, they actually had a lot of vinyl there, both new and used. I ended up getting a used CD. 
I got a compilation. It's by the 13th Floor Elevators. It's called His Eyes on the Pyramid. It's a two disc set. Basically everything you want and need from the 13th Floor Elevators, you know, from their first album, Psychedelic Sounds, and then um, Easter Everywhere. So that was kind of a neat pickup. Seven bucks was pretty reasonable. So I got that. Um, yeah, check out the footage from CD Warehouse. City on the trek back to Omaha. I really like Oklahoma City. It's a nice size. Um, so we went back to Guest Room Records, but this time we went to the one in Norman, Oklahoma. Wow, this chain is amazing, you guys. Like I said, my favorite stops on the trip were at Guest Room Records. So I got a couple of albums there and a CD. I think I got more CDs, but I guess I just grabbed this one. <laughs> so I know one of them was a shoegaze CD that I'm saving. Um, the Rizios, can't stand the Rizios. So um, this is a punk band from the late seventies. I'm not sure the longevity of the band, but this might be their first album. Um, so tracks, this is actually an extended edition CD. I love their energy. I mean, it's good punk music. There's male and female vocals. Check these guys out, you guys. Then I found Donovan's Greatest Hits. I didn't have anything from Donovan, so I found this. This is a good copy. This is $3. Um, very clean copy, because whenever I see this, it's really, it's really beat up, so I was pretty pleased. So I just had to get it for that price. And then this is my best find of the trip. So I got an OG press of Massive Attacks Protection as you can see, it's the first UK pressing. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was like super excited to find this. I love Massive Attack. My favorite from them is Mezzanine, which I have a German reissue of. That sounds freaking amazing. Um, I couldn't resist this first UK press of this album. It's a good album, it's not my favorite from them, but Lovely to add this to the collection. I'm still looking for blue lines, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you the label on this. Really clean. It's on Wild Bunch. Hmm. So um, that was $35. Not too terrible, right? That was my big find or the most I spent on a single item from the whole trip. Um, yeah, so that's Guest Room Records. Check out the footage I got from their Norman, Oklahoma store right now. Got me watching your eyes, watching things go by outside. Out the window of a train. Easy sipping them, just seeing it fly left to right. Pour the milk and I'll say when. I'm out wandering around. You're but one thing I found. I don't mean. Kind of hoped you wouldn't blame me I can't wake 
amazing place to eat in Oklahoma City is this Pakistani restaurant called Kebabish Bites. They were really affordable. If you like, you know, Indian type food, uh, it was amazing. So that was my favorite restaurant on the whole trip. Very reasonable, delicious. All right, last stop of the trip was Wichita, Kansas. Took a little bit different route for the way back home. Spectrum Music in Wichita, Kansas. I got three CDs. They were also kind of weird about uh, footage, so I didn't get any footage at all. But I found some used CDs, some really cheap ones. So Red Cross, Beyond the Door. This is their latest album from 2019 on Merge Records. This is $3. How is it $3? It just came out, right? They still got their Power Pop kooky vibe. I like this band a lot. In fact, in Washington, I found their album Neurotica, I think it's called, on vinyl for a cheap price. So now I have Beyond the Door, $3. Um, okay, this is an upgrade. I pretty much wore this CD out, so I had to get a new copy. This is a sealed copy of Sloan's Smeared album, which I believe is their first album. I have a lot of Sloan's albums on CD. So this was $2, brand new, sealed. Yes, Power Pop Geniuses from Canada. And then last thing I got was Curves Chinese Burn. This is just a single, it was $2. I love Curve. They're one of my favorite shoegaze bands. And here's a track listing right there. Okay, that's it you guys. That's my um, road trip video. I probably should have filmed this a lot sooner than I did. Hopefully you like some of the footage. I know some of it's a little shaky or um, hopefully you didn't get sick. I just kind of wanted to give you an overview of the stores I was able to check out on this record store road trip. Um, that's up my alley. Whenever I go somewhere new, I want to check out the record stores. I didn't spend as much as I thought I would, which is actually a good thing because I'm still trying to recover from... <laughs> When I was in Washington, I just went overboard there. So other things in the works, um, I want to say thank you to Gary. He sent me just an awesome item. I know I said I was going to show that soon, but I am waiting to show what he sent me when I do my room tour. I already got my CDs set up over there. They are organized. I ordered Ikea Kallax, Kallax shelves, however you say it. Um, yeah, I'm kind of upset because they were supposed to be here Wednesday and now they've been delayed another week in getting to me. I had them shipped, so I'm not sure why they're taking two weeks. I ordered three of the eight cube IKEA shelves and I'm hoping I can do, I'm hoping I can arrange them um, in this configuration I want down here, but I would love to do a room tour for you guys and show you my audio equipment, which two pieces have been upgraded. Thank you to Bo and thank you to Gary. <laughs> you guys, I love my stereo system now. So it sounds so good. Um, this light is weird, so I just got a little bit darker. And I'm gonna get my vinyl organized, which uh, that's my next big project once these freaking shelves get delivered here. I am so excited to get my vinyl organized, you guys. I've been waiting for that for quite some time now. I will be doing a whole room tour, hopefully sometime, not this weekend, but maybe next weekend. I'm hoping the setup of the shelves goes well. I know some of you recommended to put some type of a backing on the Ikea shelves. In the comments below, kind of let me know what you mean by that. Do you mean like, um, like a piece of plywood that you nail to the back of them or a piece of foam? Like, give me a little more guidance on that if you would. 
Um, and of course that shoegaze video is in the works as well. I also have some BCLT to show. That will all be coming up in the next few weeks to a month. Stay tuned, you guys. Thank you so much for being here and watching my road trip adventure. It was a lot of fun. Hey, keep buying the vinyl, keep spinning the vinyl. Till next time, bye.